books or movies that you uh, recommend to people uh, that maybe have opened your eyes on certain things or entertained you or stimulated you? I have to say, I I haven't loved a, a big studio film in a long time. Um, yeah, uh, there are films that I and I want to like American movies from big studios and in, in all the way up through the 70s and 80s. I want to <laughs> answer some questions, man. Um, yeah, talking place. about books and movies, I was I was, I was oh, lamenting the fact that I've read both. big Hollywood studios don't. Uh, <laughs> I've read a lot of movies and seen a lot of books. <laughs> oh, I love that line. Um, uh, yeah. So, m movies I tend to like these days, sadly, don't come out of big American studios. I like, you know, I like Mike Lee a lot. He's British, and uh, you know, his his films are real. I, I in this, uh, you know, in this day and age, it's sad that you can't have a movie get major distribution if it doesn't have CGI and explosions and shit. I wish there were Hal Ashby's around who could make a movie about an old guy and a cat and, get, and have it be distributed. But, you know, so I'm just a bitter old guy who loves shit from the past. I've so immersed that's myself. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying I've to say. immersed myself in full fantasy land at this point. I've regressed into the world of comics and full swords and sorcery. Okay. I carry a sword around, a broadsword, and uh, <laughs> tend to walk around New York in a, in a loincloth with a shield. And uh, yes, but um, yeah, no, I, I think that it's, it's interesting because a lot of the stuff that I really like tends to be like uh, still a lot of the, the, the little gems that I kind of held on to along the way in life. And I don't think it's just necessarily a nostalgia thing. I think that, that there's just a lot of, we don't really embrace uh, the depth of soul that I think you were allowed to uh, artistically in a lot of other times I think that people and we don't nurture and grow we don't it's true don't absolutely yeah. there, there there, will never be another uh, Joni Mitchell or Leonard Cohen or I, there won't even be That's another I mean even bands like nurture. fucking yeah, even definitely. huge monolithic bands like U2 failed yeah. for a couple of records you know I what I mean I think it's like, a shame I think that more that, that true like good artists and people that fucking David Bowie was following Mott the Hoople around the station wagon just are nurtured the way, yeah they're just not nurtured happen. and it, it's not been that long that that's been going on I think that, that honestly like when we were kind of doing stuff even back like in the in the nineties, I think was one of the last periods. I think it's we get we have gotten more crass. I think we peaked in nineteen seventy five. I don't know about that. We would go earlier. I go back a little yeah. ways before that, honestly. Like that stuff we were doing on stacks. That's all. The, uh, the shooby dooby era. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, would you consider you guys um, yourselves to be fashionable, hip or anti, anti hip? We don't follow fashion. Do you see the that shirt? would be a joke. Do you see the shirt? You know we're going to set them, set them, see, see, see. so everyone would take note, take note. That's my adamant yeah. lyric. His adamant lyric I guess is, I was punk once. I spend my cash on looking flash and grabbing, grabbing your attention. <laughs> That's your adamant lyric. Yes. I was saying I don't follow fashion. The devil take your that stereo would be a joke. your record collection. No, I, I dress like a, like a, a social studies teacher in, in, <laughs> the, in, in the home <laughs> counties of England. Yeah. No, I mean, look at me. I'm not fashionable. I'm wearing a fucking barber jacket and uh, Brooks Brothers uh, slacks. I mean, not have much. Things went yeah. on and you were possessed. You know, you, you all channel the beast. Yeah, you yeah. have to. That's what yeah, we were yeah, talking yeah. about. It's like we just first it just feels weird, but I guess you try to like yeah, embrace if you can't it a do little that, bit. You gotta just walk off the stage. Yeah. Sure, so sure. we just try to you know you embrace it. Jack in. And, uh, a yeah. lot of you know, rock, you a lot know. of good vibes to him and. Uh, ain't real. and hopefully he'll be able to take care of you know what he needs to do. But but yeah, it's been great playing with him. Hundred uh, percent, man. Like uh, at this point, um, and writing together, we just did four. Do you talk about the? Yeah, we, we covered all this. Shit. Ah, yeah. man. I, I, I was the whole year. I was thinking of stuff to say. <laughs> um, the, I mean, the plan right now is to cut uh, the the remaining tracks, uh, you know, vocals, uh, and and some maybe some overdubs in the next month or so, and look for maybe a March release. To be optimistic. So. Yeah, we need to probably maybe a couple more point, songs. Uh, well, well. We, yeah, we know. Well, we do know that it will be. Obviously, we'll we'll distribute it digitally for download, and maybe on our own website make it available uh, for download. But we're also going to do vinyl. So, um, and we're not sure on which label we'll do vinyl. We're the digital release and distribution we'll do ourselves, and uh, we're we're talking about who will do the vinyl right now. So. Yeah. What, uh, what if any artists or music that's kind of more current inspires you guys right now? 
I mean, you know, I hear things here, here and there. You know, because the sort of the the art of the album is kind of lost for me, at least. I just hear, you know, I'm always asking people like, play me some stuff that doesn't suck. So there's like the occasional, I'll hear songs from different artists, whether it's like uh, Iron and Wine or a Band of Horses or whomever yeah. or other bands, and I'll be like, holy nice. shit, that's fucking rad, that's awesome. But I, I don't. Um, you know, maybe it's also having two kids and not having a lot of time. There's, there are no current bands that I, I'm totally knowledgeable about and obsessed with and follow. I still really appreciate what Queens of the Stone Age are doing. Oh, and yeah, I think there's one. And yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that they're they're one of the bands that just got in at the end of, like, the, the era of, of a lot of good rock stuff that they just came out with some amazing, amazing, you know, material and they just really transcend yeah, it's it also, it's just it's just and they do what it's they want real. yeah man i think it's, that's the one thing it's like they're able to you know yeah, come up with it, really it, cool music yeah. and get on tour and do it and play it in front of a lot of people they're one of the rare bands that can do it on that absolutely level. that's yeah, the thing i think they got his, in there his his voice voice is just, it's <clears> so special it is as balls it plays off the top we were talking about before yeah but artists not being cultivated right uh, it's not as favorable for yeah. the record labels as a, from like a highest an investment you know standpoint right. yeah. uh, to, to cultivate or nurture an artist okay? yeah we were talking enough about that you know it might also be a, a national like a it could also be different from territory to territory i don't i can't like you're you're from canada i know a lot of people up there and i know you know when i've been up there there you know there's there's also a different vibe with the the music scene up there when i've been up there and i think that um you know it's it, it, luckily i think there's a lot of places in the world that do appreciate yeah, the local no, but, talent but whether in europe i know a lot of people in you know bands in europe that do yeah great. the sad thing is though it stays local right. but i think to become a, a world changing artists unfortunately there's a commercial aspect to that you know, you have to be heard by the world and the mm -hmm. the sad thing about at least what we're doing here and in and in the UK because they started the whole fucking pop idol you know win a talent show become right, a pop star thing right. um, it's like the what you get success. yeah well what you get are talent mm -hmm. show winners you don't get artists so even using the word artist to me is kind of like really yeah. artists you know people who have good intonation and can sing like who can over sing you know, uh, like I said, uh, you know, are we going to get a Neil Young ever again? I mean, well, speaking of fucking we're not, Canada, we're not creating culture. We don't. People don't have any sort of memory past you know six months before. And that's when I say it's like the McDonald's of of music. It's like you go in, it's fast, you know, it's fast food talent, yeah. and people it's aren't going to remember these things. Like, what do we have to look forward to? Like down the line, you know, ten years from now, people are going to be like, you know, oh, this uh, X Factor, blah blah blah, it was great. you know, remember that song that people even remember also, like two you, months you, ago. We were talking earlier about. Some some great art being an acquired taste. Mm. Bob Dylan was an acquired taste. Yeah. He couldn't get arrested no, by a record no, label. Think he, of all the people. Bob Dylan now. went to every fucking label yeah. there was, and it wasn't for uh, John Hammond who got him signed. Absolutely. He, he so would much never of it is just predicated world. upon look and 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 you know people write songs, mm. people and, everything that's superficial. Yeah, and that's a real shame. I think that we need to kind of get to the heart and soul of, of yeah. you know people again and, and art and get away from yeah. The art is not computer uh, screens. Art is not technical idea. proficiency. You know right. that's a great thing. But you know, there's there's a million guys who work in guitar shops who could play faster than David Gilmore. You know what I mean? But I would rather hear him bend one fucking guitar note than hear some noodling fucking video game playing, you know, twerp at a fucking guitar shop. Ah. So that's sorry. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, I no. just I, I think that that the the machine, the fucking music business machine is uh, is is, is not anymore? conducive to art. Or not as conducive. And as I, it I goddamn miss going to stores and buying music at stores. I think it's such a shame that all the all the jobs that were wiped out by technology. Like there's great things about technology, but the bottom line is, it's not just the artists that suffer. It's the people that own the stores, the people that work yeah. for it, it's the people that manufacture it. It's the so kids much. Used to go to listening stations, and, like and you said yeah, the other day. I mean, and what just happened? That was such a part music. of my life. Yeah. To go to these two and just tool around for an hour and a half and, and look at all these great records and try to experience things and now it's like oh what's up on uh, you know iTunes top 10 or you know like what was the other one we were saying like it's like Raph City oh, yeah. there's like there's a few things yeah. and it's like but if Spotify, you Spotify tell, tell me what to listen to tell me what to listen to this guy's a hipster I'll follow him I'll and listen to what he listens such, to like the alley is so narrow so if you don't, you know, if you, if, if, you know, you end up not being able to really appreciate the breadth and scope of yeah. what's out there. It's so narrow now. And that, that's something that's really unfortunate because there's an entire generation and many generations to come 
uh, unfortunately, they probably won't experience anything like that again. You know, and that's a huge thing. That's a huge cultural loss. You know, it's like not having libraries. You know, where do you where do you go? You know, online has got to stop at some point. Also, missing out with the entire concept of you're sitting at home and you're a kid with an album, Absolutely. and you have the entire presentation of right. it. Looking that at the so much for the person themselves and beyond the jobs and all that. It's we're like, old enough yeah. to remember what it was like to buy Kiss Alive too and open it up and and just find what was in there. You know it's so I mean? much fun. It's so it's such a great thing. It makes it makes you who you are so much more than just like oh click on that and I'll listen to five seconds of that and then I'll out the door. And people who like this also like, like that. that. Okay, yeah. then I'll like it too. <laughs> yeah. It's it's they're really I just worry about this the soul. I'm done of, with that. Let me play this game. <laughs> we do that all the day. We just we, just, <laughs> we play robot. <laughs> How does your love survive? Or not survive in today's. Uh, yeah, you've got That's a very good question. Culture. Yeah, uh, very relevant. Like, well, I was talking before about overstimulation and being bombarded by stimuli of all manner. You you absolutely have to force yourself, almost sort of insulate yourself to to get back to what's real, to what's organic, and what's you know flesh and blood and art and poetry and just shit that isn't fucking digital or spewed out of some fucking mobile device so yeah unfortunately you have to in, instead of passively just letting that happen and to you know there's no more like tune out you know to turn you know tune in drop out whatever it's it's you have to consciously reject all the bullshit that you're bombarded with all day and just besides that people need to be able to communicate on a human level again I think I mean there's there's so much distance between two people now because people are so used to uh, I see interfacing. couples like this all day yeah it, they, they, they communicate with both in their fucking through iPhones. texting people when they initially meet you know you, you, you want to get together with a person man you should be able to be cool and get together and hang out with somebody and not be a, a little scared little rabbit that's only able to communicate through a device. I mean, come on. I mean, what is that? You know, you, 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 that's not. There's no soul there. There's no getting to know someone. And the more that we try to communicate through devices and and through these this weird medium of technology, the further opinions and yeah, like it's like yeah. it's like you're selling Android. It's like, but uh, the further we get away from the concept of like understanding each other and understand that on a, on a bigger level, that creates distance through the whole world, man. That's why you know people can't but understand each other. And end up getting shot and shooting each one other. Thing I wanna, no yeah. distance in between. One yeah. thing I want to say, though, because I, I don't want us to sound, you know, in all humor aside for a second, we we're not hopeless. In fact, right. I, I remain very hopeful be, because I made the analogy before. You know, right now, did you read, did you guys read David Byrne's piece in the Guardian about how? You know, we're being taught now that monopolies are good. It's like you know, if you have a battle for a social network and there's one company left standing, that's a good thing. It's it's not a good thing. It's a terrible thing. Right. And monopolies are bad. And I do think the pendulum will swing back because we're people and we'll realize that. And and these big fucking monopolies that control our tastes and are, or try to are, are they're going to break apart? They're, even if they have, they're forced to break apart, and there there will always be revolutions of the mind and of the collective consciousness, and the pendulum always swings yeah, back. And and people crave real shit. They crave flesh and blood, and people are going to say, "I don't want to say it in 140 characters. I want to write a fucking essay, right. and I want you to take the time yeah. to read it. And let's all talk about it. You know what I mean? So right. it's going it like to the happen. good, the, the the good of humanity will yeah. out eventually. Hope you know. Hopefully, we went from the fucking McCarthy era in this country where yeah, everyone fucking before. looked the same. Absolutely. And the same to, you know, we went to before. fucking let your freak fly, very good fly and fucking... That's a very good point, because people yeah. forget the, 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 the reciprocality of time. They forget that things have happened in the past, and there was a lot of darkness in the past. It wasn't, yeah. you know, again, people don't have a... One of the things, unfortunately, I think that people lose sight of is, is our past and our culture and what's, what's come before. So, you know, when you reflect upon that, you do see that there's been a lot of bad things, and we've come around to a lot of great things, and, and hopefully the pendulum, like Richie said, will swing back. You know, we'll, we'll, yeah. Okay. Love, always love. Um, love is a law. Love under will. Parting words of wisdom to the young people out there struggling with God knows what. Hmm. what? Tomorrow, yeah, there's always tomorrow, man. You know, yeah, there's always tomorrow. You'd be amazed at you know, just when you're at your darkest, you don't, uh, you can't even believe what's around the corner. You know, it's either something incredibly worse <laughs> or much, much better. But it's a ride, you know, who knows? But it, it, eventually, you, there are some beautiful moments, so don't end it.
That's for sure. And, and Don't I, end I would it. say for for cuz yeah, we've both definitely struggled, especially as youths. Um, I would say you know, focus inward only constructively and not narcissistically and definitely, you know, as angry and fucking pissed off as you are, always, always, you know, hold on to your empathy and be kind. And please channel people. it for good. Use yeah, the anger man. and use the frustration for more than cocking a gun and pointing it in someone's face. Yeah. We're all in you this know? together. Yeah, so. use it, use it, use that, man. There used to be a time when I, I played punk rock and, and hardcore and I was 13 years old because I was angry. I didn't take a pistol out and go shooting people at school. Yeah. You know, I played I, the I, drums. I did actually have, have, there was some violence in my life and I even you know inflicted violence and I, the things uh, there are things I deeply regret so that's why I would say all facetiousness aside be, be kind to, ever, to one another because we are really all in together and, and uh, don't make assumptions yeah. about people and, and the days the, the day the person's day you're wrecking could be mine so be yeah. conscious of it <laughs> so, anyway. hey, thanks very much for your time guys all right thank, thank you, you guys oh, you yeah. a lot of your time I would truly appreciate it uh, thank well, you for coming here yeah from Montreal yeah. I and mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah you enjoy the show yeah, come to big show alright well hopefully we'll get up there please do sometime soon you know? we used okay. to have a good time we did, we, we've done a bunch of dates in Toronto we, yeah, played in, we did Quebec yeah. I think in uh, a couple of places but we got to have a good time in Toronto it's a great spot man T.O. yeah where Tio, are you guys from? we did Ottawa he's from Montreal yeah, yeah. Down the street. he's from Montreal out of Montreal East Coast, yeah. right yeah, yeah. I'm not right. Quebecois actually oh I'm actually you uh, Francais? Mais oui, je parle français. Bien sûr que oui. Mais <laughs> vous parlez le vrai français. Non, non. Moi, je parle le français de Québec. So two, yeah, so sont deux français con, presque complètement différents. You are, you a, are you a secessionist? Uh, no. I mean, I'm do you want them to do, do you want them to see? You are? Well, he is. Oh. Big time, he's lying. No, no, no. Uh, the French want the English I to die. Just, What's that? The, the French in Quebec want the English to all die. Yeah, the French in France want them to too, and, and the English want the French to die. Right? Yeah. Trust me, I have my family that's in England, I know. Oh yeah, well, I'm actually like they bring their bloody rabid dogs across the channel. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, okay, yeah. So, have you been to Paris? It's fa it's, there's dog shit everywhere. No, it's, yeah, so. But, uh, that cool. That yeah. could be true. Yeah, you know, it's fine. You know, actually, no, if you, there's dog shit, but these guys come out in these, like, silver biohazard suits and they, and they clean it all up, so. Nice. Yeah. Like a, a, a kiss suit or <laughs> was it Jackson? Was it Michael Jackson who wore one of those? Oh, Elton John wore that glittery. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's a great outfit. Yeah, yeah. That, I I I, re I rehash it for the Ignorance Tour in 1992, I believe. I oh yeah, eh? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you wore outfits. I did have some good outfits. Yes, you were like I living the 70s and the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I was living whatever the thing I wanted to live, and I still, I'm still do. Living the you have to live, yeah, man. You have to live, you know, in your own little world sometimes and enjoy it. You only have this life, man. Enjoy it. Yeah.